Hi all, welcome back. I was doing a workshop for psychologists just a few days ago on how to bring the iPad into practice. One of the things I always do when people are contemplating a new technology into their workflow and they're unsure about how to incorporate it, I always give them a little bit of history that says we've kind of been doing this for a long time. Uh, and this is just a new way, a different way of doing it, but we're still trying to do the same things in our workflow uh, in business. We're still doing note taking, we're still doing recording of our sessions where needed, we're still producing invoices, and the iPad can do all of that. But also some more things. Anyway, that's the subject of the next workshop, which I'll tell you about another time. Let me show you on the screen what I was trying to do by introducing the iPad. Up on the screen now, you'll see Steve Jobs from January 2010 when the iPad was released at Moscone Center. I think it was the Moscone Center in, um, in, in San Francisco. Uh, this Steve Jobs part I added in here. It wasn't part of it. And this is really just a, a still shot, which you can see here. It then translates into him walking across the screen. And this is the movie that then plays. I'm just going to show you how I introduced Steve Jobs introducing the movie. We want to kick off 2010 by introducing a truly magical and revolutionary product today. And I want to, what I went on to say was that the uh, the two most common words you'll hear in Apple Keynote are magical and revolutionary. And then they go on, of course, to demonstrate it. Now, later on, this is the most important uh, element that I wanted to talk to my colleagues about. Because Apple's initial ideas behind the iPad, and you need to know it predates the iPhone, then got put to one side. And then the iPhone got front and center 2007 and then the iPad came along a bit later and what Jobs was trying to say here and we have another movie which I've taken from the keynote that Jobs did and what he's saying is that these are the sort of things which they originally attended the iPad to do better than either of these two so I'll play this so you can see what he's saying if there's going to be a third category of device it's going to have to be better at these kinds of tasks than a laptop or a smartphone. Otherwise, it has no reason for being. And it was my way of saying that Apple doesn't introduce products just because everybody else has. It often ignores products that other people have because it simply doesn't do the job any better. And this is, this is the reason why Apple brings products to the marketplace. And so the idea was that what, we, what I wanted to do was have them replace these items browsing email photos video and so forth with the sort of things that a psychologist would be doing so that's for everybody to be doing okay but what would a psychologist be doing in here now rather than me having answers i wanted them to supply me with answers so i wanted my presentation to be interactive let's go on to the next part of the slide here and so the setup for this is we're going to use the same two, the same images, the iPhone on the left-hand side, a MacBook on the right-hand side. Just about all the people who were attending this workshop either had a, a smartphone or they had a laptop. And the question is, why should I be spending money on an iPad? What's it going to offer me more than these other two items can't do? And that's really what Jobs was saying too in his introduction of the iPad. There's a second slide that I created from this one here. And all I did was duplicate this slide. And then I simply sized this one up here. So duplicate the slide, creates this one, and then I simply increase the size of this one. So when you add then a magic move up here, watch what happens. Here's our starting slide magic move it now of course one could do this on just the one slide and do a move and scale build or action but why go through all the hassles just let magic move do it so all you're doing is once more duplicate this slide this is the resulting slide and then 
stretch out the slide as you wish. Okay? What my target behavior was, was to eliminate this part and leave me with some white space where I can now start to add stuff in. How to add stuff in there gets interesting because I want that to be interactive. I could come up with my own ones, writing email, well, that's already up there, writing reports, keeping up with continuing education, whatever. But I didn't want to tell them how to use it. I wanted them to start to think about their own workflow and therefore take some interaction with the presentation. But what I do need to do is get rid of this, the browsing email, photos, music, games, and ebooks. So the question becomes how to get rid of it. Well, it's not so hard. Let me show you. I'm going to use Shift Command 4. Bang. And up comes my Voila desktop screenshot equipment. And I'm just going to highlight the area that I want to get rid of. There we go. That's what's going to go. Okay, that's what's going to go. So I'll just, I can make a copy of this if I want to. Because maybe I want to bring the words out somehow, make them fade away, in which case I'll overlay it. But I also want to overlay it with this area here. That's going to cover up this part. So that's going to be a build in. Otherwise, you could do it as a build out. In other words, put the words over the top there. Let's go into here. Put the words over the top, and like so. Now it's going to become almost invisible. And what you do is you just move this to another slide. You just duplicate this, but the background has to have nothing in it. And then you could do what you like with this. You could do a build out on this and have it um, wipe out if you like. Boom, that just wipes out. That's what, that would be one way. But of course, in the background here has to be nothing because you want some white space there. So that would be one way of doing it. So now we're back to our original diagram here. Yeah, this is the original diagram. And what I want to be able to do here is I'm going to take a screenshot, in fact, of this area next to it. And that's what I'm going to overlay. And that will build in and cover this up. And that way, I've given myself the white space to fill it in. So, once more, back to Shift Command 4. And you take a picture of this. Now, of course, we want those white lines there, so you make a little bit of a in. And you take a screenshot. There we go. So, back to um, Voila. And we're going to grab it. There it is there. Now, you're going to see something interesting happen, because it's not going to be perfect because it's a much smaller size, okay? But you can already start to see, I think, how it's basically blending in. You really have to know that it's there to say, ah, what's Les been up to? Because unless you expect it to be there, you don't know it's there. And the very slight changes there aren't gonna make much difference. But notice, however, that we still have some lines left over there. So the only way to do that is we're going to have to stretch it. And so we go over here to format. But you don't want constraint proportions because that means that as you stretch it this way, it's going to stretch it this way. And we're going to lose that gradient. Um, it'll become very obvious. Um, let, me, let me show you why. And now see how it becomes obvious? We don't want that. So let's go back to undo, make sure we're back to where we started from there. So constraint proportions, un click that and now you can stretch it gently to the right <laughs> until it covers and look it's disappeared let's go full screen and essentially you'd have to know it's there to know it's there now I can see it here you may not be able to see it on YouTube but I can see it's here if this happens and you get a little bit funny about this what you can do uh, under view go to show adjust image here and this is where all the parameters are, okay? And it may well be that as you drag this along, 
it changes the exposure and it makes it even less able to be seen or more able depending on what what how you do it there we go so now that becomes really interesting Boom. Let's get, now it's almost impossible to see that it's there yeah almost impossible to see so now i've got my white space in between and my task then is to choose how to get rid of these things so in this case it's going to be a build out because this blank panel is going to build in and obscure the text that's up there so we're going to add an effect we could dissolve it in we could blur it in let's have a look what a blur would look like okay so we need to see what this there it is there blur no, don't like that at all change i get the feeling that probably a uh, a wipe down might work quite nicely not across well that's kind of interesting too uh from top let's have a look and see yeah that suits me better so we can say you can do it quick you can do it slow bottom up works better you choose i'm going to use from top to bottom there we go from top to bottom uh, okay i don't think in the scheme of things i don't think it really matters that much what's going to happen but what's important is that that's there and it's there on a click so the story goes hello this is how steve jobs introduced the ipad he told us that these are things that they expected it to do better than either of these two things. Steve Jobs tells the story, otherwise it has no reason for being. Yep. And then, so we play this, and then we move to this. And then I can say to people, so what do you think? If you're, as a psychologist, what sort of things in between, doing using an iPhone and a laptop, what sort of things should it do better? To justify your reason to purchase an ipad let's take some suggestions from the audience so we'll get rid of this and let's take some suggestions so that's kind of part one so we've now done the setup uh, this whole thing probably is three minutes it may take you 20 minutes to do this setup now next part so now we're going to talk to people about well what would you put in so how do you do this how do you actually write in to what's going to go there you can't really type it in on the fly. So we're gonna do something else. Here I've got my iPad. Okay, here I've got my iPad and a pen to write on. But I'm using a special piece of software that allows me to annotate a slide. It's called Dossery, D-O-C-E-R-Y, and also allows me to control the movement of the slides backwards and forwards as well as annotate it okay so uh, i'll just give you a little bit of an idea how that works so we'll just press the play good and as you can see my ipad's now gone full screen okay i can touch a button on the side here boom and bring it in so that i nowadays walk around holding my ipad as well as a clicker sometimes i put the clicker down in the old times i was actually quite concerned about hiding that clicker away. I didn't want to transmit that I was about to change something. But now, because I'm annotating slides so often, I actually walk around with the iPad and guess what? People don't seem to mind. People aren't saying, oh, he's not a good presenter. He's got to have his slides there. By the way, little, little trick. On the iPad here, you can represent the presentation mode. So if I hit X on my keypad, it changes over and now you can see the current slide and this is in presenter mode slide 21 of 38 on the right hand side there is what's coming next i simply use the x button on the keypad at the mac to do that okay and then on the ipad it reflects that but curiously enough on the ipad i can actually touch a button on the top here and it goes back to audience view Okay, if I hit the X again and it goes back to, now we know this is what the audience would be seeing and that's what I'm seeing walking around with my iPad. So I get to see with my iPad what the next slide is rather than having to look back to see where the MacBook is because I don't present behind a lectern. All right, so let's go back to here and we've drawn this here. 
on the iPad using the series control. Notice that there's now a border around the slide and that tells me that I'm now in drawing mode. The audience doesn't necessarily notice that. If you roll back the YouTube video a little bit, you'll see there was a tiny little flash. It's an option that you can get rid of here. But now someone says, well, writing reports, and I can take my pen. Okay, writing reports. Great. What else? Sending faxes. Great. What else? Got to have good handwriting. Um, I can get rid of these ones if I want to. In one go. Boom, all gone. What else? Testing. Doing some psychometric tests. Testing. Good. And now you can see what's going on. We're replacing what was there before. Now, the other way, of course, is that you could have a preset one coming up there and then reveal them one at a time. But that puts you back in control and the audience just sits there dummy wise and saying, well, okay, he's telling me stuff. But why not interact? Why not get them to think more deeply about, well, how could I use it? What are the things I'm already doing? Can it do this? And they could put it up and say, can it do testing? And I'll say, yes, I'll, give, I'll show that to you a bit later on. It might be, um, can it do questionnaires? And the answer is yes. So by using your iPad, here's what it looks like. This is what it is on the screen. Uh, you can start to annotate. And of course, there are better pens. This is one really early one. There are better pens with very fine nibs and it will really do your handwriting uh, in such a nice way. So I hope you enjoy doing that. Um, the software to control the iPad and to annotate it is called Dosseri from SP Controls in San Francisco. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and got a lot out of it.